So good afternoon, everyone. Uh, my name is John Benner. I'm the Extension Agent for Animal Science uh, headquartered in Augusta County. Uh, I'll be presenting tonight on the Virginia Premium Assured Heifer Program. Uh, this program is administered by Extension and has had some success uh, throughout the state. So we'll be providing an update uh, on it for you this evening. Uh, what is the Virginia Premium Assured Heifer Program? And its function is to provide a template for proper development and management of beef replacement females. Heifers are certified for good management practices for health, reproduction, and physical soundness. Furthermore, heifers selected for the program uh, have superior genetics, uh, which are backed up by um, EPDs being recorded and uh, posted. How are premium assured heifers developed? Uh, candidate heifers can be raised um, basically two ways. They can be raised at, at home, on farm, by a producer. Uh, that's probably how the majority of premium assured heifers uh, that uh, uh, are in the Virginia program are raised. However, they can be um, raised by private contractors, uh, similar to the way uh, some producers may have a uh, bull test station uh, feed out and develop um, potential herd sires. Producers work with their veterinarian um, on the health requirements and uh, their extension agent, uh, their animal science extension agent to verify uh, that heifers meet premium assured guidelines and requirements, which I'll uh, touch on here uh, shortly. Premium uh, producers keep necessary records on health procedures. Uh, the sire genetics, uh, service sire genetics, as well as uh, pregnancy uh, status. I uh, don't have an example of some of those forms, uh, but we do have them um, certainly in the Augusta Extension Office. Uh, so a few uh, of the program requirements as far as physical uh, requirements. Um, bred heifers, uh, and there is a category for premium assured open heifers. However, uh, mostly in, in talking with extension agents that help run this program, uh, most of the premium really comes from heifers that are uh, guaranteed bred and marketed as bred. Uh, so the, the age uh, stated for bred heifers, uh, the requirement is they need to have a stated birth date that is known uh, with a projected age at calving being 22 to 26 months either for spring or fall calving heifers. Uh, the frame size is important as well. Um, when you think of uh, premium assured heifers, you want heifers that are going to produce calves uh, that are going to, at least on a commercial standpoint, market uh, or raise uh, so that you can market superior feeder calves. Uh, and therefore, they have a requirement for the frame size being four and a half uh, to six and a half to help uh, reduce any possibility that uh, offspring from those heifers could be graded uh, as shorts. Uh, structure is very important for any replacement uh, animal, uh, particularly in a uh, cow-calf herd. Um, so all heifers must need to be deemed to be uh, structurally correct uh, by the Virginia Premium Assured Heifer Committee that's in the area, uh, uh, which would include uh, your local animal science extension agent. So in the Shenandoah Valley, the central Shenandoah Valley, that would be me uh, in Augusta County. Uh, back in Highland County, that would be Berkeley Clark. Um, and then there are various animal science agents throughout the state that serve on those committees. Uh, for our region, we would use uh, the, a local cattlemen's association, either Rockingham or Rockbridge to help facilitate uh, uh, that need um, for a committee to evaluate those heifers. Muscling, all heifers must possess adequate muscling. Uh, so two and a half to one with the upper side of, of two uh, or better uh, would need to, to be um, found by that committee for the muscling uh, of those heifers. For body condition score, any heifer that would be uh, developed as a premium assured heifer and then marketed in the sale would have to have a BCS score uh, prior to that sale uh, to be recorded uh, as five to seven. 
And so we'll, we'll show some examples of that as well. So <clears throat> I took this uh, picture from the Virginia Extension publication um, on uh, body condition scoring beef cows uh, and just put this uh, picture up to, to show a heifer that would not qualify due to body condition score. Um, the publication notes this heifer as a three due to uh, lack of fat deposits, um, you know, off of the tailhead, uh, hook and pin bones. Uh, and then it's a little bit difficult with a picture to tell with the rib shape, but uh, it does appear the ribs are, are fairly prominent. And then a very prominent shoulder blade, which really puts her in the three category. Another example. Um, this heifer is a little bit close. Um, this Charlet heifer looks uh, considerably better, a little bit more conditioned, however, not enough conditioning to be a BCS5. Uh, this also was from that Virginia Cooperative Extension publication. Um, she has a few ribs showing, not as full of a brisket, um, and, and is classified as a four, uh, so she would also uh, at least need a little bit of uh, grass or supplemental feed to develop further to be a uh, to make the program and be a minimum BCS five. All right, one notch higher on the scale. Um, this female uh, would be a, a body condition score five. A lot more smooth appearance across the rib cage. A uh, little bit more level, uh, smooth appearance across the hook and pin bones. Fuller brisket uh, makes her a body condition score five. So. From five, six, and seven, uh, that, that works for the program. If you get over seven, um, here's a, a BCF six. If you get over seven, you could get into uh, a little bit more of an obese condition, and those heifers uh, probably, at least a lot of data shows, that they may not be as fertile if they get that heavily conditioned. Uh, so that five to seven range is really ideal. So there are health requirements. Um, and really the program works to verify these health requirements are met. Um, so the biggest thing first off is uh, vaccinations. Um, the vaccinations uh, include um, brucellosis vaccination uh, at 12 months or by 12 months of age. Uh, as we're familiar, this is gonna be done by our herd veterinarian. Uh, so there, there does need to be a record uh, that a heifer did receive that. She needs to have a official ID tag that indicates that, um, but that needs to be done. Also, heifer needs to have uh, inoculation against the five-way uh, bovine respiratory complex. Um, so IBR, PI3, BRSV, BBD1 and 2. Additionally, the product that would be used for this needs to be modified live. Um, and needs to have a uh, label claim for fetal protection. Uh, this additional uh, step was made to just ensure heifers that are vaccinated, they're gonna have protection against the respiratory complex uh, that could cause any sort of abortion. So uh, that's the stipulation behind fetal protection. Um, naturally, a seven-way clostridial inoculation uh, to protect against black leg and associated uh, clostridial diseases and a five-way lepto protection and most label claims for lepto vaccines uh, do require two doses for uh, bred heifers. All right, so <clears throat> what are some vaccine options for respiratory and lepto? Uh, so I pulled these uh, images off uh, a few uh, online vendors. Uh, if I've overlooked an option, um, you know, that's just due to uh, me not finding one. Um, didn't want to preference any one company or um, uh, firm. Uh, however, I do have a Merck, BI, and uh, uh, Zoetis products uh, that do have the fetal protection claim and are modified live. Uh, so both of those are essential. Uh, most of the time you have a respiratory and lepto combined. Uh, here are three common options, but certainly there could be some other uh, options as well. So a few more requirements on the health side. 
if uh, you're participating in a fall sale, uh, they have the recommendation that an insecticide or a dewormer uh, be used within 60 days of any uh, premium assured heifer sale uh, and before November 1st. Uh, then for spring sales, uh, the dewormer would need to be used within 30 days of the sale and after the date of February 1st. Um, then on the defects, uh, certainly you're trying to uh, put together and package uh, a good offering to potential buyers of premium assured heifers. Uh, so we do have to um, you know, disqualify heifers that have um, extremely bad eyes, um, maybe due to pink eye or another issue. Uh, if the, the eye is probably equivalent to a greater kicking a feeder calf out of, a, of the grade um, or, you know, supremely ulcered, uh, very cloudy, probably would be disqualified. If it's a small, minor spot, uh, that may not be an issue. Um, but again, that would be a committee decision. Um, you know, not to, to pick on any uh, proponents of horn cattle, uh, but <clears throat> horns are not permitted for the program. Uh, then anything off kind uh, that may not be desirable would include rat tails or bobtailed heifers um, uh, that could be uh, kicked out as well. Um, any lame animals also, I mean, and that can occur between a consignment and a sale, but if, if they do come up lame, they have to be pulled out uh, at any point prior to the sale. All right, so... There are some additional tests for the program. Uh, the first is heifers need to be uh, tested and proven negative for BVD persistent infection. Uh, right now, uh, the Department of Ag lab that handles all of those samples is in Withville. Uh, so we would have to coordinate among producers that are participating to uh, collect samples and ship them off in a uh, uh, time-sensitive manner that will work for uh, sample collection procedures. Uh, also, uh, this is a new uh, requirement, and I think to start out, I don't think a lot of producers may be able to do this at least right off, but all service sires uh, should be uh, BBD negative as well for PI, or persistent infective negative. Um, other associations have enforced that, but I think starting out, that may not be something to at least uh, lead in with, uh, but that would be a potential uh, goal. No brucellosis uh, tests are, are needed because veterinarians should have vaccinated them already. And then if you're selling heifers out of state, uh, they would need a TB test. Um, Right now, uh, they're considering bringing in anaplasmosis being negative. However, that has not been required for 2020 or 2021 as of yet. A few things on genetic requirements. Uh, any breeds, uh, and I say that with a little bit of caution, but any normal uh, breeds that you see in Virginia, common breeds uh, for beef cattle uh, could be considered. Um, it is geared towards commercial uh, cattle. Um, service sires, however, do need to be identified. EPD requirements are for uh, birth weight or Cavanese direct, uh, and then particularly yearling weight, uh, which I'll, I'll cover uh, here in, in just a minute. A couple other critical things on growth and pregnancy check. Um, additionally, heifers need to have, if they are um, tested pregnant, they need to have a pelvic area of 180 centimeters or greater uh, at time of preg check. Uh, if they are smaller, uh, they're considered uh, to be a little bit more of a risk in terms of uh, calving, and they cannot be marketed as premium assured. Um, also, bred heifers need to be guaranteed pregnant, um, and this data is all compiled by the producer, a veterinarian signs off on it, as well as the uh, animal science extension agent. Once that's done, we can then submit that to uh, Department of Animal Sciences on campus at Virginia Tech, and they can then send us 
uh, producer tags for uh, the heifers. So a few quick things on the EPD requirements. Um, you can see the tags on what they look like. Um, but the breed, um, again, going off an Angus base, Cavanis Direct minimum EPD is uh, plus eight. And then the corresponding birth weight EPD maximum is plus one. So pretty stringent on the service sire uh, for the heifers, which to me makes sense. You want something that it will be calving yeast bred to uh, replacement heifer. Uh, then they do have some yearling weight EPD requirements to ensure uh, calves out of these heifers will get up and grow. Um, and so they are tied to the sire's birth year. Uh, so they have not updated them yet for 2019 uh, or 2020, but likely the EPDs here you see probably have crept up uh, from 2018. Um, but if you're using a bull born in 2018, um, if he's an Angus bull, he'd have to have a minimum uh, uh, plus 78 for a yearling weight EPD to uh, be marketed as premium assured. So why consider participating in the premium assured heifer program? Well, various cattlemen's associations uh, have been very successful in putting together programs, uh, working with producers, organizing a sale, um, and, and really having uh, satisfied producers that can sign heifers as well as those that buy heifers. Uh, talk to a couple agents that do currently administrate uh, a heifer sale and uh, they basically gave me a few numbers, uh, averages ranging between uh, just over $1,100 uh, to uh, $2,100 being a, a real realistic range, which should be a premium in terms of selling a replacement heifer over uh, other uh, avenues that you may uh, look, look at if you're trying to sell replacement heifers. Uh, right now, at least on our, our local level, we're interested in restarting uh, the premium assured heifer sale uh, that was at Virginia Beef Expo um, that Extension and Virginia Cattlemen Association worked on uh, about 10 years ago. Um, and I think it would be beneficial to look at bringing that effort back. So talked about some of the benefits and the premiums that, that have been seen. Um, here are some projections on what it may cost on some of the additional requirements with the program. Uh, so that producers can kind of pencil out maybe what a net uh, income could be from participating in the program. Uh, but if we did have a sale at, at uh, the Virginia Beef Expo, um, you may look at commission around 12%, uh, maybe greater. Preg check, probably about $15 a head with the addition of pelvic area score at seven bucks. Um, at least $10 a head to test for uh, BVD. Um, to have Virginia Academies Association help market would be $5 a head plus the, the fee for the uh, tag, um, as well as tele-auction minutes. And um, that would total to be at least $250. Bucks. Um, so looking at maybe if you had a, a net proceed or a gross proceeds of $1,700, uh, you'd look at uh, you know, a net value of maybe uh, 14 uh, or, you know, 1450 um, to, uh, to bring back to a consigning producer. So um, that kind of concludes my comments, uh, but um, feel free to reach out to me if you want to learn more or if you're interested in participating. Uh, thank you for joining us and uh, look forward to uh, seeing you down the road.